was that, delivery? Looks like a Sony. I'm loyal to Canon. Take it away. Oh, I've changed my mind. Leave it under that hedge. Get the hell out of here. What is happening guys and welcome to another video. Now you can probably tell by that friendly encounter that I just had with the mailman that I've just had a new camera delivered. Now not only have I made the controversial decision to switch brands from Canon to Sony, but I've also made the decision to upgrade my camera from the crop sensor camera that I'm using right now, which is a Canon M6, to a full frame camera, which is the Sony a7C. Now I've been wanting a full frame camera for years, but the problem has always been the size. Now what they've done with this camera is they've taken everything from the Sony a7 III and they've managed to fit it into the smaller body of the Sony a6600. So it's basically a full frame camera with a compact size. Now I was going to do an unboxing video for you guys, but to be honest, I'm being a bit impatient and I just want to get out and start using this thing. So I'm going to skip the unboxing altogether. Now let's find out what this looks like on this tripod here and in this studio environment. So is this looking any better or have I just wasted all of my money? The main thing that I want to do today is just to see how much of an upgrade it's actually been to my Canon. So let's get outside and see what this full frame fuss is all about. So this first shot is on the Canon M6 and I am still really happy with this image. But I am hoping that I'm going to be even happier with the image from the new camera. So now we're on the Sony and you can already see so much more clarity and detail in this image. But let's take things a little bit further. Okay, I've cropped right into this shot now and you can see such a big difference. Now this is probably partly because of the sensor size difference, but also the Canon is filming in 1080 and the Sony is at 4K. So after this test, I switched it down to 1080 as well to make things a little bit more fair. Okay, so back on the Canon and I'm filming a house which I wish I could afford. It looks nice enough already, but let's see how it looks through the lens of the Sony. Okay, so the first thing that I notice here is I still cannot afford that house. Now the colours are a lot more vivid here, but what I really want to see is the clarity once I crop into this image now that they're both filming in 1080. Okay, so they are more closely matched now in terms of clarity and sharpness, but you can see that the Sony is still way ahead here. But what's more impressive to me is the level of detail that it's managing to capture in the shadows. So let's crop into another area of this same image to look at another example. So you can really see a difference here. The Sony is way ahead. If you look at the grass, you can see so much more detail and you can even see little daisies coming up through the grass. So the sensor size is clearly making a huge difference here when it comes to dynamic range. But let's just remind ourselves just how good this camera can be when you're filming in 4K. I mean, that's just ridiculous. I can actually see an ant having an argument with an earwig. So one of the deciding factors that made me choose this camera over anything else was the fact that they've put a new colour science into it. Now Sony's have never been known for having the best colours, especially when it comes to skin tones. So the next test was really just to compare how the skin tones look on the screen when they haven't been edited in any way. So I had to pay this handsome model to get in my video, but I think it was worth it for the test. So this is the Canon M6, quite natural colours, but personally, I prefer these colours that are coming out of the Sony a7C. I'm pretty happy with this look now, and remember, this is completely unedited and ungraded footage. So what you're seeing are the colours that come straight out of the camera. And finally, we have the all-important night test. Now, the Sony has already shown its value in good lighting conditions, but where these full-frame sensors are supposed to stand out the most is in low-light conditions. And as you can see, the sensor in the Sony has not let me down. So one of the main issues you get when shooting in low-light conditions is the level of noise or the level of grain in your image. So let's crop right into this shot and compare the noise on both. And this is where the full frame sensor really shows its value. The image from the Sony looks pretty smooth and the image from the Canon reminds me of the feeling I get in my head after a night of drinking too many beers. And remember, the Sony is still filming in 1080, so in 4K the results would be even better. 
So after this initial little test shoot that I've done, I've got to say I am pretty pleased with my purchase. Now I wanted to keep this video quite simple just to show those comparisons between the APS-C size sensor and the full frame sensor, but I will be doing a lot more content on this camera so that you can see my full review and also I'll be looking at different lenses and different audio options as well. So make sure you stay tuned, hit that subscribe button and I'll catch you on the next one.